sexual attraction. Its raw power, focused and honed over a million generations, stands as the most basic of human instincts. Its energy maintains our species and electrifies every human animal. But unexplained urges can also transform it into twisted crimes of passion, and sometimes an uncontrollable drive to have sex with children. By the time Ross Nelson finished high school and joined the army, he already had molested more than a dozen young boys. While in his 20s, his couplings with pubescent teenage males continued as he sampled sex with females, but his appetite for boys eventually overcame his attraction to women. Now incarcerated at a Texas prison, he denies cruising for or stalking his victims and claims they came to him. Most of the boys that I had sexual relationships with, I found them at home, in my home. A friend would bring them, personal reference. A boy would show up and he would bring a friend along whom he thought his, his friend wanted to meet me and that I would like his friend. Nelson would buy clothes for his boys, take them to dinner and movies, or help them with their homework. Over a 40-year period while operating a landscaping business, he had relationships with hundreds, maybe thousands, of teenaged boys. He insists the attraction was mutual. I never did force anyone to have sex with me. I never did coerce anyone to. Anyone that did, did because they wanted to. Either they felt for some mistaken reason that they were obliged to do that, or they did it simply because they enjoyed doing that. Nelson was consumed by his desire for teenaged boys. He once admitted to having sex with 28 children in a six-month period. Sex is sex. I can't say that it was extremely rewarding. It's an obsessive compulsive thing. It was conquest, sexual conquest, obsessive compulsive behavior. In 1988, Nelson's long trail of abuse and psychological terror came to an end. A 13-year-old boy reported to the Houston police that Nelson had performed sexual acts on him for almost a year. Police found pornographic materials in Nelson's home and discovered a computerized network of pedophiles linked by the internet. Nelson was found guilty of sexual assault and sentenced to 20 years in prison. How does normal sexual attraction decay into the engine of child abuse? Why is the sex drive of a molester seemingly impossible to control? Psychiatrist Fred Berlin, founder of the Johns Hopkins Sexual Disorder Clinic, believes the intensity of the sexual urge derives from the same powerful instincts that lead humans to reproduce. The sex drive is a powerful biological force. If one is unlucky enough to have that powerful biological force aimed in the wrong direction, towards children, for example, it's still, like for all of us, we currently crave satisfaction. So the pedophile is gonna have to go through life leading a celibate existence. And that indeed is a very difficult thing to be able to accomplish. Researchers think the heightened sex drive of pedophiles has another component that shifts normal sexual urges into abnormal cravings. They agree with Nelson himself that it could be an addictive personality trait pedophiles have at birth. I was born in this. I didn't go into it. This is not something I got up one morning when I'm 14. I'm horny, I'm going to go find a little boy. It's not a choice where I sat there and shall I be gay, shall I be straight, shall I be a pedophile? No, that didn't happen. I probably could have been a very good alcoholic and never have been a pedophile. I think I fell into a routine behavior pattern. Pedophilia is, in a sense, a craving disorder. The child is to the pedophile what the bottle of alcohol is to the alcoholic. We cannot cure craving disorders, but we can successfully treat them. We can teach people how to successfully learn to resist unacceptable cravings, be they for alcohol, drugs, or unacceptable forms of sexual activity. Forensic psychiatrists like Alexander Obolsky theorized that a combination of culture and the mysterious strength of the male sex drive may contribute to the predominance of pedophilia in men. Most of the research and most of the offenders are men. Men in general prefer younger people 
to have sex with or to be attracted to. I mean, it's all over the culture. And homosexual men are just as likely to be pedophiles as heterosexual men. The reasons for the lurid cravings of the pedophile remain cloaked in mystery. Their predatory lust for children may rise from a potion of addictive personality, power, and a fragment of the male psyche, or it may not. The key that will unlock one of the most powerful and damaging of humanity's hungers can only be found hidden in the shadows of the unexplained. <laughs>